So um, I want a heartfelt thanks for being here. It's really a blessing for us to be here among you. And uh, I'm going to just share from our heart because I'm speaking on a topic that will it, sometimes it's not it, uh, there's resistance to it, but there's reasons because there's resistance to it. Um, sometimes there is a welcoming and it's good because the word brings truth. Sometimes there's no understanding. But I'm speaking not just as a pastor today, but I'm speaking as a, a person, a member of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ who has walked the road, who has learned this truth. And so from that perspective, I want to come. I don't want to deliver something that is a textbook uh, message, but I'm sharing my, our lives with you this morning. So just touch your ear and say with me, I have an ear to hear. I have eyes to see. And my heart, Lord Jesus, is open to receive your word. Because your word is spirit and life. And let it bear much fruit in me. Amen. Amen. Uh, when they came to Jesus and they said, they boasted about the works they did. And look, we did this in your name and we, looked, we did that in your name. We raised the dead and healed the sick and cast out demons. He said to them, go away from me. I do not know you. Because the second couple down verses, he says, a tree will be known by its fruit, not by its works, by its fruit. And so when we are rooted in Christ, we bear Christ's fruit. And it's much more than works. And so when the word is received, it bears fruit within us. And it brings, uh, John 15 says, it brings glory to our Father. When we bear fruit, it glorifies the Father. Amen. So I want to just lay a foundation and then I'm going to jump into it. And I'm not going to say what's the topic because I want to lock the doors. And it's okay. We, you will be okay. So tell your neighbor, you will be fine. <laughs> okay. Hebrews 4.12 Amplified says the following, For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active and operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature. Listen, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. This is what the true word does. When you sit under word, living word, this is what happens every time you receive the message. Your heart is exposed, not just in a negative way, but in a revelation way. Also to see what is in your heart, what is good in your heart, but also what is of God in your heart and what is not of God in our hearts. What is half-truths, what is misconceptions and, you know, lies that the enemy built into us through tradition. We are coming from a very traditional background, uh, growing up in the, one of the sisters' churches, and so we, and I believe some of you also. And there was one aspect in the traditional church that never got was never taught its proper way and and truth and that was the truth about the holy spirit and so there was a lack in our lives concerning the power of the holy spirit and this is what i'm addressing today it's the same thing because of tradition we were exposed to something or not taught rightly by preachers or teachers concerning the word and i'm speaking about finances today and we were abused by, by people concerning our finances. So in the same way, when we hear the word, when we hear the truth, it brings a judgment to our hearts, a rechtspraak. Judgment is not always negative. It brings a right thing into our lives so that we can have a measurement, so that we can measure our understanding with what the word says. Amen? Jeremy Riddle in the Reset book says the following, we must understand scripture is our judge, not the other way around. We don't judge the scripture. 
Come on, church. The scripture judges us. Why? We are not just reading scripture. It is reading us. Isn't it beautiful? So when you read the word, the word is actually reflecting you back to, your, to yourself. And you're reading. You've been, re- you've been read by the scripture and weighed by the scripture and judged by the scripture. It says scripture is revealing the thought and attitude of our hearts and exposing them to us. So we can immediately see where where the shortfall is. And it's not a judgment, a condemnation, it's a reflection. It's a reflection where we stand in the face of Jesus who is truth. I am the way, the life, and the truth. And we read the truth and the truth reads us. And now there's a comparison between my understanding and the truth of the word. And one of us is changing, and it's not the truth. (laughs) Amen? One of us is going to change. It's not the truth. So, And that is repentance. Repentance is that I was thinking along these lines, but now I turn around. I make a noia because I've been reflected in the mirror of truth. And I see now where I must make the adjustments. And this is what this morning is about. It's making an invitation to make adjustments. And I'm going to share, like I said, I'm going to share our lives with you. We are not preaching to you. We are actually testifying to you. Matthew 7, 24 to 27 says the following. So everyone, Jesus is speaking. So everyone who hears these words of mine, And act upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, will be like a stupid, foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell, the same rain, the same floods came, the same wind blew, and beat against that house, and it fell. And great and complete was the fall of it. Many times we look at people's lives and we wonder, what is their secret? Why do they move forward in life? Why do they have so much peace? Why, is, why are they so blessed in a way? This is the reason. Because we all hear the same word. You are sitting in this fellowship and in this church. You are sitting under the same preacher, under the same message. The only difference is, do you only hear or do you hear and obey? Do you hear and apply what you heard? Because what you have applied The same circumstances, we are living on the same earth, the same planet, the same area. We're living in the same economy. We're living in the same schools, the same workplaces, the same people, the same nation. We're living in South Africa. The same wind, the same storms, the same beating against our house. Why does people, some people just stand? And why does some people fall? Only one thing, you've been read by the scripture and you have been weighed by the scripture, but you have not acted upon the scripture. That is the only difference. God does not have blue-eyed boys and girls. It is your faith that pleases him. And faith without action is dead. So we can have the most wonderful messages, but if we do not apply We will never see if the word works. We will never see if the word is true. We will never see the fruit of the word in our lives. And that applies to every truth and every principle in the kingdom of God. About forgiveness. About fear. Do not fear. Do not be anxious. About being obedient to the word in every principle. When I speak about giving or sowing or tithing, and tithing is not an Old Testament concept because before the law was given, Abraham tithed in Genesis 14. 
And there was no contract. There was no contract like in the law, where the law says, if you give your tithe, I will bless you. No. In Genesis 14, after the victory, because of his, his thankfulness, because of his worship, Abraham gave a tithe. And then Melchizedek said to him, in blessing you will be blessed. With multiplication you will be multiplied. There was no contract and say, if you give your tithe, I will bless you. So this was before the law of Moses. So if we look at that, we see it was a, it was a voluntary act of worship and thanksgiving. It was a heart that realized that this is greater, this priest, this Melchizedek is greater than my understanding, is greater than myself, and is greater. And because he served him the communion, he served him bread and wine. So he prophesied already about the cross. The, the gospel was ministered to Abraham. And when Abraham received the, the, the gospel, something happened within his heart. And spontaneously he gave a tenth. So when we speak about giving and sowing, it is not about meeting a budget about a church, of a church, of a ministry, of a life. Because we've been trained, you have to give because we want to go, go bigger and we want to build this and we want to do that. And, we, and so it all, was all about the church. It was not, never about teaching us as members how to walk and operate in truth and to give with understanding because if you give with understanding there's a joy but if you give under compulsion then there's no joy when you give with under intimidation and manipulation there's no joy but if we understand why are we giving why are we reflecting the heart of God, the giving heart of God, the generous heart of God? It brings much joy to our lives. It's not about, it's not about meeting the budget. So don't, don't think this is about meeting a budget. This is about the foundational truth about giving. And I did a whole series of six parts in 2019. It's unfortunately in Africa, it's right in our God. And I didn't want to squeeze everything in here, so I'm just going to lay a foundation. Is that okay? It is not about the fear of lack, because that's the opposite of faith. Okay? Not everyone ne needs healing in this place, but everyone needs money. Is it true? Let's, let's be honest. Everyone needs money, because you need fuel, you need food, you need rent, you need whatever. We need that. So... If we do not understand the truth about that, we will, we will be in lack. Okay? It's about being empowered by the word of God. This is the reason why I'm bringing this message this morning. It is to bring correction to wrong perceptions. And it's all also about healing the abuse that we went through in churches and ministries and persons that manipulated us and even cursed us. And told us that if we don't tithe, we are cursed. Amen? And so the truth establishes us on the rock to stand in love in faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, it is your faith. Without faith, you will never please God. So it's your faith that pleases God. So your faith, and faith only comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the Amplified says in, in Romans 10, the teachings that comes from the lips of Jesus, that brings faith. Not just a, a good message or a motivational message. Truth brings faith in my heart. The word brings faith in my heart. We do not feel so naked and vulnerable in this world when we are, we, when we are established in truth. When we know the truth and understand how God thinks about kingdom finances, it empowers us. It gives us a foot, a footing to stand upon. Amen? And we don't feel so vulnerable. Ons voel nie uitgelever aan die, aan die wereld nie. And we, we understand also, it brings a godly confidence. If I know I have obeyed the word in any area of the scripture, there's a godly confidence. Isn't it true? When we know we have obeyed and we are trusting 
And we have faith, it brings a godly confidence. And it also brings a godly peace. And it's the most, money is the most, is the thing that we most stress us about. In this world, because our securities are touched by COVID, if we're touched by COVID, it's still being, we are still reeling from the aftermath of COVID concerning the economy. And so if we are not established in truth, we will be swung, we, you know, we will swing back and forth like a wave in this economy and fear will take hold of us and the peace of God will go. So we need truth to bring us back and anchor us in our faith and in godly confidence. Jesus said, he said, you cannot serve two masters. Remember that scripture? You cannot serve God and mammon. You will love the one and hate the other, or you will hate the other and love the other. But mammon means confidence. It means confidence. So the question is, where is your confidence? Is your confidence in God or is it in money? And that, that really hit me between my eyes because if you touch somebody's money, you will see who they are. If you take away their money, then I want to ask you the question, who are you without your confidence? That's the question. And that was the question that was, I was confronted with. Where is your confidence? Alma, is your confidence in your husband? that will provide for you in the, in the businesses, because we had businesses. Now, 7th of July, we will be in full-time ministry for 15 years without any security or guarantee. We live by faith, and we had many businesses, a couple of businesses, and we were successful in a way. And we were, we were really blessed. And when God moved us from the, minister, from the business to the ministry, because of the way we walked with him, he stripped everything away. So we had to learn how to trust him. We had to learn how to operate the principles of the finances in the kingdom of God. We had to trust him for 20 rand, 50 rand, 100 rand a day. We had to trust him for the fuel for today. Food for five people tonight. I had to learn to trust him in that way. And we had, it's easy to give out of abundance. But if you don't have abundance, then you give by faith. Then you need to understand what is the truth about the word and activate that principles. And I, I'm standing here and together with my husband and our, our son testifying that God is faithful and the word is true. We are evidence that when you activate the principles of giving and you are faithful to it, we are being looked after and blessed by God. We are living testimonies of what I'm teaching you or just sharing with you to this morning. When we understand the truth and we start to activate it and operate in it, it reduces stress and anxiety about the future and about provision. And whom of us doesn't want to be stress-free? Amen? And so it gives me an understanding on how, because Matthew 6.33 says, he says, do not worry about what you shall eat or drink. Remember that scripture? About tomorrow. Because he says, the heathen worries about these things. The, those who do not know God, those who do not know God is seeking these things. But your Father in heaven knows what you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be given unto you. So when we hear the truth, it gives me an understanding how to seek the kingdom first. And how to seek the kingdom first is to apply the principles of the kingdom. That's how I am seeking the kingdom. If I apply the principle of the kingdom, then I'm positioning myself in the kingdom, and now a different rule and a different authority is operating now in my life. When I'm in the world, there's laws 
of economy and there's laws of the natural and there's laws that functions and, and it's manipulated by natural man. Our whole economy worldwide is manipulated by man. It's not a godly thing. It's not operated by godly principles. So as a child of God, you will suffer in this realm. You will suffer in this kingdom. But if you step into the kingdom of God and you start to apply the principles of this kingdom, you will see a different picture and your life will tell a different story because this kingdom is higher in authority than this kingdom. This kingdom is higher in principle than this kingdom. This kingdom is overruling the laws of this kingdom. This kingdom does not need the permission of that one to bless you. Are you with me, church? So you, by faith, when you activate the principle of, of giving, that principle in the kingdom, you are stepping, you are seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things. His way of acting. And suddenly, you, you set yourself free from this kingdom. And the laws of this does not apply to my life. One thing I realized, there is money. There is enough money in this world. And there is enough money in God's hands to bless you. And he needs no one's permission to do that. It is only your faith that activates it, your, your obedience, your, your action, your ap application that activates this principle in your life. And then it brings a great reward of peace. It brings a great reward of confidence. Come on, church. It brings a great reward because it invites me now, this morning, I want to invite you if you have not activated your giving, or if you give in a, uh, okay, I must, I must give something. I want to change that. We take giving in our lives very seriously. Because it's not just an act of obedience, it's an act of worship. It's an act of reflecting who God is. Because he's a generous God. He's a giving God. For God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son. So when we give, we're reflecting the nature of God. And it also is an invitation to live a life of a cheerful giver. Whose heart is in his or her giving as an act of worship. As an act of love. To give from your heart is to love. It is to love. When I give to God... I love you. When I give to you, I love you. It's an act of love. It shows that my, my mind and my heart is transcended into love. And it gives what, it, what I feel in my heart to give you. There's only two ways of sowing. And for only, only for that I have time this morning. I, like I said, I have a whole series. But today we are just going to do this. Amen. I just want to remove that. And so... Two ways of sowing. You can sow down or to the natural or to below. For those who know, who knows us a bit, knows about the board. And if I can draw a line like this, we will have two dimensions or two realms. Jesus says, Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So there's two realms. There's two kingdoms. So if I can put it on a board, we can say this is the above, this is below, this is spirit, this is flesh, this is heaven, this is earth, this is supernatural, this is natural. So we can draw a line. Because Jesus says, I said, I came from above. But he was standing where? Below. He says in John 8, you are from below. You are from a different mindset. You are from a different realm. You are a different understanding. And that's why we have to, when we go into Christ, 
We step into the spirit. We step above things. That's why we do not live under circumstances. We are above circumstances in Christ Jesus. Are you with me, church? Okay? So there's an invitation for us to be in the spirit. So there are, because we live below, we are not from below. Jesus says, you are not from this world. So below is the world. And in all the that's in the world. All the junk that's in the world. And we have to deal daily with this below fallen state of dust. But we live from the spirit. That's what it's giving us the advantage. That's what's giving us the victory and the overcoming spirit of the Christ that puts us above these circumstances. That's why Paul says, aim and seek and set your minds on things above, Colossians 3, where Christ is and not on the things below. Remember that scripture? So we have to train our minds because we've been trained to think like this and to adapt to this realm. We've been trained since this, this high that we, this is, this is how life is. This is not how life is. Because he came to give us life and abundance. Not a life of lack. Not of a life that we have to struggle every day. But a life of, of abundance. So when we sow, we can sow into the natural or we can sow into the spirit. How do we sow into the natural? Proverbs 19, verse, um, natural is now below. We sow into the earthly realm. Are you with me? If you don't understand it, stop me and I will explain. Okay? Because this is a conversation. This is a teaching. Because this can change your life. I'm not here to just deliver something and go home and forget about it. Because it changed my life. Are you with me? So, Proverbs 19, 70 says... He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. The other translation says, He who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Listen. And that which he has given, he will repay to him. When you give to the poor, God takes note. Not because you want him to. Because you are, you are led by the Spirit to give to somebody, a meal, or you help them monthly, or in whatever way. God takes note when you give to the poor. Because when you give to the poor, you lend to God. And that is by giving to the poor, you're giving to something natural. Because poverty is not from the spirit. Come on. Poverty is a spirit. It's a spirit that traps your mind that you think you don't deserve anything better. We've been working in Malawi since 2011, poorest of poorest, in the rural, rural areas. Sleep on the ground, eat what they eat. There's no ablutions. You're washing a little bucket with a little tin cup, and there's just a hole in the ground for your business. Okay? So poor. When we went there the first time, they didn't receive any offering in the church. They just had service and then they left. And then the next year, it was just Paul, myself and Joshua that went. We slept in a mud hut. I was so angry. I was not ready to suffer for the gospel. <laughs> because at least I could sleep on a concrete floor the previous year. Now I have to sleep on a mud floor this year. <laughs> so I was downgraded, not upgraded. Now I sleep on a, on a bed, so I'm upgraded. <laughs> but uh, we slept there, and the poverty, the poverty. And the Saturday morning, God said to me, you're going to speak about the spirit of poverty this day. And we spoke about giving, and the power of giving, and the truth about giving. And God told me that the spirit of poverty is not nothing to do with money. It's every to, everything to do with a mindset that is not creative, that cannot see vision. That's poverty. Because if you cannot see the potential, you will never give. You will never, you will always think 
that this is how life is. So the spirit of poverty robs you of creativity and vision. The moment you have vision, you can see the possibilities. Come on. That is, that is the counterfeit of poverty. So we need to break the spirit of poverty. And I remember, is that okay if I share that? I remember that I made an invitation. I told them, and I told them about the money, and I took out to money, and I said, I said, this thing, this thing has a voice. When you open your purse, it says, says yes or no. It speaks to you. It speaks every day to you. When you go into your bank account, it speaks to you. It has a voice. And this voice has been intimidating us for years and years and years. Because we always adhere to this voice and not to the voice of God. And so today we're going to break this voice power in our lives. Because when you open your purse, it, this, it says there's no food. There's no money for no food. There's money for not for this. There's not money for this. There's not. I remember me as a child, my parents, and they loved us. But when we asked them something, the answer was always there's no money. There was no adjustment or making a plan. It's just there's no money. Where do you think money comes from? So I hated money. I hated it with a passion. And I steered away from it for as long as I could until God told me, you have to break this cycle in your life. And so it has a voice. And that morning, we, we, I said, whatever you have, whatever, even if it's a bar of soap, half a cup of rice, or because it represents money, you bought it. Even if it's just a quacha or whatever, bring it, we're going to sow. And we're going to sow it like we're sowing seed on the ground. Because the word says, God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. And come on, let us sow. And we sowed. And so the few kwacha keys and the money is so ugly because it's been crumpled and, you know, it's been, it's been used so many times. It's so dirty and it's, it's really ugly and it's, you don't want to touch it because it's so dirty. But the money was lying there and then the Holy Spirit said to me, let them come and dance on it. Because they have to take victory over that voice that's been speaking to them for generations. Generations of poverty. And I made the invitation, and you can ask Paul and Josh. They came very... <laughs> very carefully. They, they came and they stood in a circle around this little pile of money. And I said, today, we're going to break the power of this thing in your life. Because if you can trample on it, it's like that Jesus trampled upon Satan's head. You're going to crush its head. You're going to crush its authority in your life. Because money is going to stop telling you what to do. And you're going to start telling money what to do in your life. And I remember they were so afraid to step on it. And then one, his name is Blessing, good name, Blessing Ganford, he jumped on that money and he started to dance. And he started to dance and he's dancing, he was dancing. And then the next one joined and then another one joined and another one joined and another one joined. And the next moment before, before it happened, I heard in the spirit like a chain that snapped. <laughs> And they started to scream. They started to scream in victory. They started to scream and then they danced. Buddha, the stuff it getrak. The the dust was everywhere because they took back something that they were robbed from for generations. And it was an act of faith. It was absolutely an act of faith. The next year we received the offering. And like I said, 
Some of it was the most hideous sculptures, but some of it were the most beautiful half bars of soap and half cups of rices and quachas and shillings or whatever. Some of it were mat mat mats, some of it were spoons, wooden spoons. It, uh, the hideous sculptures were birds, but it looks like a guinea fowl, but it, I think it must be a guinea fowl, but I'm not sure it's a guinea fowl, but it, it was a gift. And they came dancing to the front, jubilating and ululating when they gave their offering with understanding. And some of them today owe scores, lands, plots, come on, because something broke in the spirit. And that's the power of truth. That's the power that we are dealing with when we step into the kingdom of God. It is higher in authority that for generations that day, the generations to come was changed. Yes. The inheritance of generations to come has changed. And that is what God wants for us too. So we sow into the natural. When we give to the poor, we lend to God. And without us knowing it, he takes note. He keeps book. Of everything you gave to the poor. And then he repays you. This, listen. And he will repay him. It comes back to you in different ways. It comes back to you in different ways of blessing. It comes back to you in specials. It comes back to you in protection. It comes back to you in blessing. It comes back to you in somebody gives you something, you get a good bargain or a good deal. It comes back to you. In whatever way God chooses, it comes back to you. He repays you. The second, the second way we sow into the natural realm is Ecclesiastes 11, 1 to 4. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. When you cast your bread, your bread is your, something that you eat, need now because you cannot keep bread for years. So if you cast something, if you've got, a, you've got something, you have provision for something now in your life and you see a need and you are led, led by the Spirit, not emotionally manipulated or blackmailed. Amen? Because people do that. So, and that is, there's no fruit in that. There's no blessing when you're emotionally blackmailed in giving. So, but when you have something, you have provision and you know, oh, I want to get myself something, yeah, there's enough for, for something I want to bless the house with or my family with, and there's a need. When you take that bread and you cast it, it will come back to you after many days. You will have the means again to get what you wanted and desired in the first place. Are you with me? And more. So it's just an open hand to give. It says, give a portion to seven, yes, even divide it to eight, for you know not what evil may come upon the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, it's principles. If the cloud is full of rain, it will empty, it's a principle. And if a, trough, a tree falls toward the south or towards the north, it's a principle. In the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. It's a principle. Amen? So, this is a principle. He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. So, we do not look to the natural things. We sow and give in faith. Because our eyes are not on this realm. Our eyes are on the God of this kingdom. And he's a faithful God. When we sow into the above realm, we sow into the spirit. We sow into the anointing. We sow into the supernatural. This is where it comes to the things like this. Where, where this community comes together. This gathering comes together. And we give the opportunity for sowing. You have now the opportunity to sow into a supernatural realm. You have the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. Not on a natural plane, but into a supernatural plane. And so when God says, if you give to the poor, I will repay you. If you, if you cast your, water on the, your bread on the water, it will come back to you. But this is a different story. This is not one plus one is two. This is not three plus three is six. This is exponential. 
because you are dealing now with a supernatural principle. You are not dealing with natural things. You are dealing now with the anointing and the spirit. And 2 Corinthians 9 says, and Paul is talking, you can go and read it for yourself, 8 and 9, it speaks. If you go read 8, you will see the Malawi story because they begged Paul to contribute. It says, in the midst of a severe tribulation and lack, they begged Paul to give. Because they understood if they give to this man, to this anointed man who is preaching the kingdom of God, something is going to happen to their finances. Let me read. Can I read it for you? Let's read it. It says, we want to tell you further, brethren, about the grace, the favor and spiritual blessing of God, which has been evident in the churches of Macedonia, arousing in them the grace, aroused in them the desire to give. For in the midst of an ordeal of severe tribulation, their abundance of joy and their depth of poverty together have overflowed in wealth of lavish generosity on their part. It is like a conundrum. They were so poor, they could not pay attention. But they desired to give. They desired so much to give because they saw something. They recognized something supernatural upon Paul's life. And it says here, for as I can bear witness, they gave according to their ability. That's what the Malawians did. Whatever they had, they gave. Their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, because they stretched their faith and they did it voluntarily, not under compulsion, not under intimidation, not under emotional blackmail. Begging us, listen, begging us most insistently for the favor and the fellowship, listen, the favor and the fellowship of contributing to this ministry. If we understand that, our giving will change. Because if you are in this church, you have every Sunday the opportunity to join in the favor, listen, the favor and the fellowship of contributing. And you are contributing to the kingdom of God. And it lifts you in another dimension. If you contribute to Ron and Yolandi's life, as we will see in Galatians 6, we are sowing into anointing, and what you honor, you attract. What you honor, you will attract into your life. If you honor the kingdom of God through your finances, you will attract the grace of God upon your finances. You will attract the principle of the kingdom over your finances. You will not be naked and vulnerable to the things of this world. You will have wisdom and understanding how to operate with your finances. You will have wisdom and understanding how to give. And a man and a woman who gives with understanding in faith is a powerful woman and a powerful man in this earth. Amen? And so Paul says, now about this offering, chapter 9, he's speaking about chapter 8, about this offering. They had a year to collect that offering. For a year, they collected the offering. And he said, now about the offering that is to be made for the saints, to God's people in Jerusalem. And they sowed this seed into another ministry in Jerusalem. And it is quite superfluous that I should write you, for I'm well acquainted with your willingness, your readiness, and your eagerness to promote it. And I've proudly told about you the people of Macedonia, saying that Arcasia or most of Greece has been prepared since last year for this contribution. And consequently, your enthusiasm has stimulated the majority of them. So Paul is boasting about, like I'm boasting about Malawi. I'm telling you what they did and how God honored them. Still, I'm sending the brethren onto you, lest our pride in you should be made an empty boast. You know, we just want to make sure that we are not boasting uh, with empty hands, you know. You, you have to honor what you, you, you said. Okay, let's go to verse 6. Remember this. 
He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. When will we sow sparingly? Because we do not understand? Because we do not understand the truth? Because we do not have faith? We will hold back. When do we sow grudgingly? When we are manipulated, intimidated, and emotionally blackmailed. That is when we sow grudgingly. Just take my money and shut up. Because some of the, the offering messages is longer than a message. Who can testify of that? Some of the offering and, and they squeeze the living daylights out of you just to get a few bucks out of your pocket. And so that is not, you do not give with a, a cheerful heart. That you give just to get them to shut up. Get, take my money and go home. Oh, let's just end this. Amen? And so it says, so when we sow sparingly, it's because we don't understand and there's a lack of faith. These things we can remedy. If, you, if it's grudgingly, you're sowing in the wrong place. Come on. If there's a grudge in your heart, you're sowing into the wrong ministry. You're sowing into the wrong man or woman of God's life. Because there's, there's something, there's strings attached to it. Amen? So we re remedy that. It says here, And he who sows generously, listen, that blessings may come to someone, will also reap generously and with blessings. Isn't it beautiful? Such a person knows what he or she is doing. And he or she is doing it with faith and joy. Activating the principle of the kingdom. Let each one, listen, let each one, so when you come to service next week, listen, this is for you and for me. I came prepared. He says, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart. So when you come, before you come, because it touches our lives on so many levels. If you are married or if you're not married, doesn't matter. Whatever you have prepared, Father, this is my offering today. Please bless it. You know what we need. We know. So it's not, it's not a surprise there will be an offering. You know there's going to be an offering. So come prepared. Purpose in your heart. Why are you sowing today? What is it that God, you are trusting God for today? What is the need in your or desire? Because God is not just interested in your needs. He wants also to bless you in your desires. So as you come prepare, preparing your heart for the message, come prepare your pocket for the, for the seed and for the sowing what's, that's going to take place. Because this is a good ground to sow in church. You are really blessed. And I'm not saying this. I know that man's woman's lives. I know their spirit. I know who they are in the spirit. And you, if you sow into this ministry and in, in their lives, you will be blessed. There will be a fruit upon your lives. Amen? So it says, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. Even the word tells us, not to give under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, listen, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do giver whose heart is in his giving. I want to be that person. And I believe that you want to be that person. That person who, who, who is loved by God because I'm a cheerful, prompt to do, whose heart is in his giving. And then the word promises, God will not let you go. He will hold you. He will keep you. He will help you. He will not forsake you because you are reflecting him. You are reflecting his heart because God is a generous God. He's a giver. Amen? And then it says here further, and God is able, listen, why? Why do we need to sow and give as a cheerful giver? It says here, whose heart is in his giving. And God is able. Say with me, God is able. Can I go five minutes more? Is that okay with you? 
And God is able to make all grace. Grace is a wonderful thing. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus. So when we, we step into this place in obedience, when we activate the principles and we are faithful to it, we attract grace, like I said before, into our lives. But listen, he says, every favor and earthly blessing. In the context of this scripture, grace means every favor and earthly blessing. Say with me, every favor Amen. and earthly blessing. So don't feel guilty when God blesses you about with something earthly. Like a house, a car, with a good job, with whatever, whatever, a boat, a, a motorcycle, a, a kite, whatever. Me a kite, me a kite, okay? <laughs> whatever he blesses with you because or you attract grace into your life. And then it says, it comes to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self is sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnishes in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. That is a mouthful. It's a whole sermon. You can go and write that down. Write that down. Verse 10 says, And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating, is not God will provide bread for the eater and seed for the sower. No, no, no. You must be a sower first. Because if you sow, there will be bread. If there's only bread, there's no seed. Come on. Are you with me? Listen, God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. Amen. Verse 13 says, He's, he's speaking to the Corinthians church. He says, because of your standing of the test of this ministry, because you will be tested in your giving. You will be tested in giving faithfully your tithe. You will be tested in your obedience. When it comes to money, whoo, we can easily talk ourselves out of giving. But if we remain faithful in this ministry, because you are now ministering to people, in your giving, you are ministering. You are reflecting God. You are worshiping God. You are an you are example of his heart and his nature. They will glorify God for your loyalty and obedience to the gospel of Christ, which you confess, as well as for your gener generous heart at liberty to them and to all the other needy ones. Amen. Sowing into the anointing with this, I'm closing. Galatians 6. It says, let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all good things with his or her teacher, contributing to his or her support. So that's why we take up a teaching seat or a priestly offering. Because you receive instruction in this house in the word of God. Like today, you are receiving instruction that brings correction, that brings blessing, that brings a fresh perspective, that is bringing some clarity, and is also bringing healing to your heart concerning the abuse of being sitting under people that just want your money and is not interested in teaching you how to be prosperous or be blessed. Amen. So if you receive instruction, you sow into that person's life, you sow into that anointing, you attract that into your life. You attract breakthrough into your life. You attract faith into your life. I will never ever let the opportunity goes, go by when this anointed man or a woman of God, I want to sow into their lives. Because through that, through the years I've done that and I've attracted something into my own ministry and into my, enriched the anointing that's upon my life. 
So when you can bless a man of God or a woman of God, and you, you bless it with a cheerful, giving heart, you attract something very special into your life and into your, your finances too. So I'm closing. Proverbs 13, 22, we spoke about Malawi, about generations. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. I'm going to read that one again. Because it's too good to be true. But the word of God says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of the man that will change. What he said he will do, what he promised he will fulfill. A good man and a woman leaves an inheritance for their children and their children's children. And the wealth of the sinner or the wealth of the wicked, another translation, finds its way eventually. Can I have a good amen there? Into the hands of the righteous. The one that is doing things the way God does. The one that is obedient. The one that is standing in faith. And the one that is activating the principles of the kingdom. Not this one. Then you're on the same playing field. But this one. That the wealth will find its ways into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. And I'm coming back. There's enough money out there. It just needs to find its way to you. And the only way it will find its way to you is if you stand before God in faith and obedience and act, act out the word of God. So today, I want you to take whatever you have prepared in your heart. Maybe it's on your bank account. Just discuss it quickly with your wife or your husband and say, I feel that today, because we're going to break a cycle, so this is going to be a seed of faith. I'm going to call it a seed of faith. And we're going to break a cycle today. We're going to break the cycle of lack. And the cycle of month end. Who knows about that? You know that salty crack in the beginning of the month? And that, that empty, naked, salty crack at the, uh, you know, when it's time for payday? So we're going to break that cycle of lack in the name of Jesus. With the seed, let's stand. And we're going to declare something and then I'm finished. And take your wife's or husband's hand in agreement or your friend's hand in agreement. If you're, if you're single, it's fine. You're standing with the Lord. And say, with the seed, say with me, with the seed, I seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. With the seed, I declare I'm a sower in the kingdom of God. With the seed, I break the cycle of month end lack. With the seed, I break the cycle, come on, say with me, of month end lack. With the seed, I break the cycle of famine and poverty. With the seed, my harvest overtakes my sowing. With this seed, I call my harvest in the name of Jesus. I am a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. And God will not let me go. In God, I put my trust, not in mammon. My confidence is in God, not in money. I worship you, God, with not just my life, but also with my finances. In Jesus' mighty name. And we say, Amen. And Father, I thank you that today in this place, 
that by your spirit and by your anointing, Lord, and because that we speak from a place of understanding and truth, I break the cycle of lack and poverty. And I speak peace to every heart and every mind, Lord. That the peace that Christ gives will settle in our hearts and it will settle our minds, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that faith will arise because of this word and that we will activate the principle of giving because your kingdom is supernatural and above all. Father, I thank you that with each baby step and with each faith, faith leap, you will meet us where we are. Every leap of faith, you will meet us where we are, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you will prove yourself to us, that you are true and that you are reliable and that we can trust and adhere to you. I pray, Father, for the protection over our finances. And I thank you, Lord, that blessing will come in many different ways and avenues that we did not expect or even perceived. But, Father, I thank you that we will see your hand and we will see your faithfulness and we will see that you are a true God and that your word is spirit and life. I bless every seed, Lord, that is sown today and even through EFT, Lord. I bless it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we say... Amen.